Hey, what is going on guys? It is Jack from The Modern Coder and on this episode of Coding Tip of the Day, I'm rocking my classic Maryland Ultimate jersey. Shout out to my Ultimate Frisbee people. I even got some of my favorite discs on the wall over there. Anyway, on this episode, I'm gonna be talking about a better Git workflow with Rebase instead of Merge. So I'll start off by explaining the basic concepts of what's a Rebase, what's a Merge, and then I'll run through the actual Git commands and the steps um, for how a Rebase-based workflow might look. So right out of the gate here, the goal of both merging and rebasing is to take commits from a feature branch and put them onto a master branch or any other branch for that matter. So let's start with how a quote unquote normal merge would happen. So let's say I have a graph that looks like this. As you can see, I split off my feature branch at commit two of master and I've done a bit of work on my feature branch with those two commits there. Now, when I wanna merge those two changes back onto my master branch, I'm gonna run a git merge. And what this will do, it will take all of my feature branch changes, all the changes from both of those commits and kind of stuff them into one merge commit and then put that merge commit on master or mainline. So after those changes are combined together into that, into that merge commit, your graph might look something like this. And if you're working on a team with other developers, you can imagine that this could kind of get gross looking kind of maybe like this, where you have a bunch of people working on different feature branches and they've been pushing changes and stuff like that. So this is a little bit gross to look at. It's confusing to trace. And so this is where Rebase is gonna help us out. So let's jump in and see how Rebase would work. So let's rewind a little bit. So instead of doing a git merge, I'll do a Rebase when I wanna take my two feature branch commits and move them onto master. What a Rebase does is it takes all of your commits from your feature branch and basically moves them on top of the master commits like this. So behind the scenes, what Git is doing is actually blowing away the feature branch commits and duplicating them as new commits on top of the master branch. So in a sense, it's rewriting history. And if I open up my Git log here before my rebase and then after my rebase, you can see that though the commits author, date, and the contents of the commit itself are the same, the commit IDs are different, meaning that it's created a new copy of that commit when we ran our rebase. And what you get with this approach is a nice, clean, straight line graph with all of your commits laid out nicely in a row. It makes it really easy to trace what commits went where, and as if you can imagine, if you're on a team with a lot of developers, all of the commits are still in a row, so it's really easy to follow, even if you have a bunch of people working on the same project at the same time. At this point, I think I better mention some drawbacks to Rebase because nothing is 100% perfect. Uh, Rebase doesn't play super well with open source projects and pull requests just because it can be hard to trace the especially small changes introduced to a code base. And this point's a little bit nuanced, but I left a link to an article in the description that I think does a good job explaining it. And secondly, it can also be a little bit dangerous if you're working on a shared branch with other developers just because rebasing, like I talked about earlier, actually rewrites commits. Um, but in the workflow example I'm about to go over, I'm going to show you a way to basically mitigate this risk. And for the development team I've worked on, we've successfully adopted the rebase workflow I'm about to show you, and we love it. So that's the basics of rebase. So let's now review what this might look like when you actually put it into practice. So when you first start development, you want to make sure you always sync the remote master to make sure you have all the changes that your teammates have been, have been doing on your local machine. So you just want to run a git pull and make sure you're up to date. Uh, great. So I'm already up to date. So when I start developing a feature, you always want to check out a new branch so that all your commits can all your commits and code can live on this branch without disrupting your master. So we're just going to git checkout dash b and we'll say you know my cool feature. Great. So now I'm on a feature branch. Now I'm on my feature branch. So as I'm developing along, I'm going to just I'm going to be periodically committing. Okay, so at this point I've developed and committed two commits to my feature branch. So as I'm making commits on my feature on my local machine, I also have my fellow developers who are shipping features to our remote mainline or our master branch. So this means that my development environment is kind of out of sync with the uh, remote mainline and that's okay. We'll fix that when we want to merge. Great, so say now that I'm now I'm done developing my feature and I want to merge it back into master. So what I want to do is check out my master, my local master, and I want to do a git pull. So what this will do is it will make sure that my local master is up to date with the remote master and any of the changes that my coworkers may have pushed in the meantime. And as you can see, I'm one commit behind. So now that I have all of my coworkers changes on my local master, I want to make sure that my feature branch will jive with those changes 
And so what I want to do here is check out my feature branch. And I'll do a rebase against my master. What this will do is it will re-anchor my feature branch against the latest changes. And at this point, Git will let me know if I have any conflicts. And if I do, I can take care of them and commit all my code to my feature branch. In this case, I have no conflicts, so I'm good to go. So now that my feature branch doesn't have any conflicts with my up-to-date master, I'm going to go ahead and check it out, check out master, and rebase master now against my feature branch. And what this will do is it will take those commits on my feature branch and replay them on top of my master branch. So now my local mainline, my local master branch is nice and straight and ready to be pushed to production. So at this point, I should be good to go, and all I have to do is a git push. So if you never used the rebase workflow before, I know a lot of those specific commands might be a little confusing, but don't worry. Check out the link in the description. I've written up a blog post with everything we talked about this video, and so head over there if you want to take like have a reference um, for when you actually go and try out this rebase workflow. So I think that'll do it for today's episode. Um, as always, if you have a question, leave it in the comments, and if you have a suggestion for the next coding tip of the day, leave it in the comments as well. Leave a like if you found this video helpful. And yeah, that is it. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.